Man, we're on a roll talking about trading defensemen today. So, first, it was the St. Louis Blues, and we discussed the rumor going around whether or not Petrangelo could, would, or should sign with the Leafs if he becomes a UFA, and we also discussed the other rumor on whether or not the Blues would trade a guy like Colton Pareko to make the room to sign an Alex Petrangelo, and if they traded Pareko, whether or not the Leafs could be the team to receive him. But this time, we're talking about a different Canadian organization. It's the Edmonton Oilers. There was this article that came out three days ago on the Edmonton Journal, and the title is kind of interesting. Let's read this one here together. Wowza. Edmonton Oilers will move out two of their top four D-men, an NHL insider predicts. Now, okay, an NHL insider has predicted that two out of the top four defensemen in Edmonton are going to be traded. Well, okay, what exactly does that mean? Well, let's go over the actual paragraph itself. This in from NHL insider Brian Lawton, a former GM and player agent and league commentator, has made a prediction saying that Ken Holland will move out two of Clefbaum, Larson, Nurse, and or Ethan Bear. Okay, well, that's a very bold, bold prediction. When was the last time a team traded two of their top four D-men in the same offseason? I can't personally recall anything like that that I've seen recently, but why exactly does Lawton say that? Well, this is what is written in the article. When you look at what they have in the cupboard, a position that hasn't been a strong point for the Oilers soon will be. So they're going to do a little bit of what Toronto was doing, and that's projecting out and saying, could an Evan Bouchard or a Philip Broberg replace maybe somebody we've already got on the roster that is at full value in terms of what they're being paid? So, can we drop down from a guy that is making maybe $4 million and replace him with more of an entry-level guy that we think has the ability to step in and give us a close... Maybe not the same, but a close effectiveness. That will be very interesting, is what Lawton says. That's where his prediction comes in. He says that he would expect that we won't see two of the guys next year who played top four this year. I have no knowledge of that. That's just my opinion. So, okay, at least this is not some insider like we had in the previous video talking about how, according to sources, some trade idea has already been brought up. But this whole idea to me, where you take a look at a top four that has four very capable players on it, Darnell Nurse, Adam Larson, Ethan Bear, and Oscar Clefbaum, and you say, okay, we've got some good young prospects that may be able to step into the league next year. Why don't we trade away one of our top four D-men to get some value back? Not just straight up in an asset point of view, but also from the fundamental viewpoint of our team's salary cap. Because, like it or not, an entry-level deal Broberg or Bouchard is a lot cheaper than the money that would be shelled out to any of these players. Let's go over that right now. Clefbaum is currently making $4.167 million until 2023. Larson is making $4.166 until 2021. Darnell Nurse is on a 5.6 average annual value contract extension until 2022. And Ethan Bear is an RFA. So, would it make all too much sense to trade any one of these guys to open up some room on the Philip Broberg or Evan Bouchard front? Honestly, in my opinion, I would say no. I would say that if you want to make a trade for a D-man, you want to incorporate the young guys onto your team, you give these young guys the best environment to learn from. You don't give away an Adam Larson just so Evan Bouchard can come up on the team and fill in his spot right away, but you leave Larson on the team so that Evan Bouchard can get mentorship, guidance, and actual valid learning experience from somebody who has been in the league for quite some time. If you really want to make a D-man trade, there's a Chris Russell over there sitting at $4 million with a modified no-trade clause, I will say that, that is going from a 10-team trade list from this year to a 15-team trade list the next year. 
And if you really want to open up some salary, I think Chris Russell's the guy you gotta move. You move out the guys who are not as beneficial to your team. Not because you want more of a trade that will actually go through, but because you want to actually keep your team together and you actually want to give your young guys the best transition possible. From an asset management point of view, though, I can understand why you could say, oh, maybe at least trade Larson. The guy wasn't really all that productive. He had six points in 49 games. I get that Adam Larson definitely did not have the same amount of production as a Bear, a Clef Bomb, or a Darnell Nurse did, but it was kind of a down year for Larson in general. Sure, the number is kind of shocking to look at, but still, would you rather have this guy in your team or Chris Russell? I know they're different positions, but bear with me here. And furthermore, we don't even have too much confirmation that Bouchard or Broberg would even be guaranteed to being able to sustain themselves full-time at an 82-game pace, being able to play every single night at a level that is top four caliber. I know Philip Broberg had his time to shine with the Edmonton Oilers in the bubble. I get that. But he is still a question mark. If you're making moves deciding that your team is already in better hands with a Broberg instead of a Darnell Nurse, then unless you're super, super confident in Philip Broberg's abilities, I don't know if trading Nurse is the right move to make, and I would question your judgment if that's the case. Now, who knows? Maybe I completely am just out of the loop. I know I made a video talking about earlier in the bubble timeline that Philip Broberg was doing a really good job practicing with the Oilers and eventually fighting his way on to a spot on the return to play roster. He actually played and he actually did stuff. This is unheard of from this kind of prospect because a year ago when he was drafted, many people thought that there would be at least two or three years of buffer time before he stepped into the NHL because his decision making, his defensive awareness, and his overall IQ was not really the best out there for D-men in the 2019 draft class. I will say, again, mega props to Philip Broberg for improving, becoming better, and actually becoming a legit SHL defender. It's just the things that he needed to work on which were his decision-making, his overall awareness, what to do, when to do it, and how to actually use the skills that he has. This stuff to me is not at a rate where I would say, yes, okay, he can come in and he can replace Darnell Nurse. He can come in and he can replace Oscar Clefbaum. Sure, we know that Broberg, when he gets the wheels going, can be a very good offensive defenseman. But to me, that's not now. That's in a few years from now. As for Evan Bouchard, well, this guy just wrapped up a really good year with the Bakersfield Condors, and we made a video about that too, oddly enough. I've been praising the top Edmonton Oilers D-men draft picks over the past two years in previous videos. But same thing goes for Bouchard. I don't think he's good enough to the point that you can replace Adam Larson with him or even an Ethan Bear. I get that Bear's an RFA, but seriously, you don't want to trade Ethan Bear. This guy's 23. He still can become so much more than what we've seen out of him already. So when it comes to the idea of trading any of these four, Darnell Nurse, Ethan Bear, Oscar Clefbaum, or Adam Larson, I honestly don't really think that that's going to happen, much to the disagreeance of the prediction made in this article. And I will say that in the article, David Staples, the actual writer, does say that he believes the same thing that I do, that even though there is value in Brian Lawton's opinion and his assessment of how things are going to go, I just personally don't agree with it. So talk to me in the comments below what do you think, because there certainly is a debate to be had as to whether or not you could thrust in a Broberg or a Bouchard or maybe even both into those top four slots in Edmonton. But I would rather just see the ability for these young D-men to come into this team with Larson, Nurse, Bear, Clefbaum, and not even just have Broberg Bouchard as your third pairing. Maybe swap up the pairings once in a while. Have your first pairing be whatever it is, whatever you want it to be, and have Broberg and Bouchard alternating between the second and the third pairing. Get that deployment time out there and get that development time. That, to me, seems a lot more valuable than just thrusting them into a top four role with no previous guidance. Expecting them to become as good, if not better, than a Larson or a Clefbaum or a Nurse. 
So talk to me in the comments what you think about this whole idea. It certainly is a philosophical argument at its core. So give me your take. I know some people are a little bit higher on Broberg and Bouchard than others. I personally am somewhat higher on them than I was a year ago, but I don't think they're top four NHL defensemen caliber today. And I don't know if I'm being too harsh on them by saying that. I don't really think I am. So tell me what you think about this idea. I hope you enjoyed this video. Show that I show us the 99. And... Bye.